where three documents will be exchanged. The first is an MOU between the Foreign Service Institute of India and the Diplomacy Academy of Turkey. This will be exchanged on the Turkish side by His Excellency Mr. Mevlut Cavusoglu, Minister of Foreign Affairs, and on the Indian side by Shrimati Shushma Swaraj, Minister of External Affairs. Thank you. The second MOU is on cult the cultural exchange program for the year 2017 to the year 2020 to be exchanged on the Turkish side by His Excellency Mr. Nabi Avach, Minister of Culture and Tourism, and on the Indian side by Srimati Shushma Swaraj, Minister of External Affairs. Thank you. The third MOU is between the Telecom Authority of India and the Information and Communication Technologies Authority of Turkey to be exchanged on the Turkish side by His Excellency Mr. Ahmed Arslan, Minister of Transport, Maritime Affairs and Communications, and on the Indian side by Sri Vijay Goyal, Minister of State for Youth Affairs, Sports, Water Resources, River Development and Ganga Rejuvenation. Excellencies, this concludes the exchange of agreement ceremony. I now hand over to my colleague, the spokesperson of the Ministry of External Affairs. Thank you. May I now request the Prime Minister to please make his statement to the media. Thank you, sir. Your Excellency, President Erdogan, distinguished delegates, members, of the media. It is a pleasure for me to extend a warm welcome to President Erdogan and his delegation to India. Excellency, I will always cherish the memory of my visit to Turkey for the G20 summit in November 2015. Your visit gives us an opportunity to reciprocate the warmth and goodwill that I enjoyed during my visit to your beautiful country. Friends, the people of India and Turkey have nurtured deep and historical links Ties of culture and language connect our societies for hundreds of years. While Rumi found his home in Turkey, his legacy continues to enrich the Sufi traditions of India as well. Friends, in our comprehensive discussions today, President Erdogan and I took stock of full range of our relations, particularly our political, economic, and cultural engagements. We also shared perspectives on developments in our region. Friends, India and Turkey are two large economies. President and I are clear that the strength of our economies presents an enormous opportunity to expand and deepen commercial linkages between our countries. I also feel that at the level of the two governments, we need to approach the entire landscape of businesses, opportunities in a strategic 
एंड लॉन्ग टर्म मैनर अवर बायोलिटरल ट्रेड टर्न ओवर ऑफ अराउंड सिक्स बिलियन डॉलर डज नॉट डू फुल जस्टिस टू कन्वर्जेंस इन अवर इकोनॉमीज क्लियरली द बिजनेसिस एंड इंडस्ट्रीज ऑन बोथ साइड्स कैन डू मच मोर आई एम हैप्पी दैट ए हाई लेवल बिजनेस डेलीकेशन इज ए कंपनिंग प्रेसिडेंट एरदॉन बोथ ऑफ अस एड्रेस दैम एंड द कैप्टेंस ऑफ द इंडियन इंडस्ट्री दिस मॉर्निंग आई एम श्योर दैट टर्किश बिजनेसिस वुड बी क्विक टू टैप the diverse and unique opportunities inherent in rapidly growing india i also believe that india's infrastructure requirements and i listed some of them this morning at the business summit and our vision of developing smart cities match well with the turkish capacities we would like to encourage stronger partnership of turkish companies with our flagship programs and projects either on their own or in collaboration with indian companies i have no doubt that the agreements signed by today and the substance of our conversation will further strengthen institutional cooperation between our two countries friends we live in a times where our societies face new threats and challenges every day the context and contours of some of the exciting existing and emerging security challenges globally in our common concern in particular the constantly evolving threat from terrorism is our shared worry i held an extensive conversation with president on this subject we agreed that no intent or goal no reason or rationale can validate terrorism the nations of the world therefore need to work as one to disrupt the terrorist networks and their financing and a put to a cross border movement of terrorists they also need to stand and act against those that conceive and create support and sustain shelter and spread this instruments and ideologies of violence president and i agreed to work together to strengthen our cooperation both bilaterally and multilaterally to effectively counter this menace friends we also discuss the need for comprehensive un reforms including the security council expansion to make the body more representative accountable and effective both of us both of us recognize the need for the un security council to reflect the world of the 21st century and not of the century gone by excellency let me welcome you once again in india i thank i thank you for very productive discussions our decisions today will certainly drive the india turkey partnership to a higher level i wish you a fruitful stay in india thank you thank you very much thank you sir may i now request his excellency the president of the republic of turkey sir sayim bashwakan 
Değerli His Excellency the Prime Minister. Saygı değer heyet üyeleri Türk ve Hindistan basınının kıymetli mensupları sizleri en kalbi duygularımla saygıyla selamlıyorum. Hindistan Cumhurbaşkanı Sayın Mukherjee'nin davetine icabetle Hindistan'da bulunmaktan büyük bir memnuniyet duyduğumu özellikle ifade etmek istiyorum. Öncelikle değerli dostum Başbakan Sayın Modi'ye şahsım ve heyetim adına kalbi şükranlarımı ifade etmek istiyorum. Sözlerimin hemen başında 24 Nisan günü gerçekleştirilen terör saldırısında hayatını kaybeden Hint güvenlik görevlileri için May the Indian security forces who have lost their lives as a result of that attack rest in peace. And I wholeheartedly condemn this evil attack. As a country fighting some of the most vicious terrorist organizations of the world, I can confidently say that we can relate to your pain and suffering. I would like to accentuate this fact. Turkey will always be by the side of India in full solidarity while battling terrorism. The terrorist organizations want to launch their propaganda over tears and suffering of the people willing to create a future for themselves out of the pain of the victims. But regardless of their attempts, the terrorists will be drowned in the blood that they shed. I would like to quote Mahatma Gandhi Power does not come from physical capacity. That who doesn't bow will give you power. And your will comes from not bowing down. And we will never allow the terrorist organizations to shackle our feet. And we will never bow down before them. Thank you. Distinguished members of the media, all throughout the Balkan Wars and all throughout the Turkish War of Independence, the people of India have always been very supportive and we still enjoy the fond memories of that solidarity that you have so generously demonstrated. India, because of its location, because of its resources and because of its economy, is strategically a very important country. In every international development that is unfolding in Asia, we see India playing a very critical role. India is advancing in every realm of the life possible, and this is a matter of joy for us. Turkey is invested in expanding their, our relations with India, and the deliberations we've had today promote very significant opportunities in that regard. First, I have had a meeting with the Foreign Secretary of India, Sushma Savage, where we've discussed issues in a very productive fashion. And then with the Prime Minister, we had a very narrow scope meeting. And then we've had the uh, working lunch with our delegations. We have concluded those deliberations, and right now we are in your presence. And in the next hours to come, I will be attending a state dinner hosted by President Mukherjee. In our bilateral talks, we have talked about the prospective steps we could take forward in order to further expand our bilateral relations. We are going to continue developing our relations with India within a strategic framework. We have discussed our bilateral relations at every dimension possible, and we have touched upon the mutual investment opportunities. As His Excellency the Prime Minister mentioned a couple of moments ago, the trade volume is around $6.5 billion, and it is not enough for us, for none of us. And we have to at least increase it up to $10 billion as soon as possible. That would be beneficial for all the parties involved. And I think both parties have that will. We have assessed the advance that we have garnered in the fields of energy and 
The cooperation projects and the investments should be increased at every extent possible, especially in the field of energy and infrastructure. Turkey is seemingly holding a very important potential which needs to be mobilized in the point of view of India. And in order to use this potential, the number of the destinations for Turkish Airlines and the frequency of the flights should be increased as soon as possible. The businessmen and the investors should benefit from visa facilitations and we should cooperate in the fields of culture, energy and IT technologies. And we can transition to using our local currencies while trading with one another in order to liberate ourselves from the pressures of the foreign currency. We have discussed these issues quite extensively and in our exchanges we have discussed the attack upon our democracy in the form of an attempted coup that took place on July the 15th, 2016, causing the martyrdom of 249 uh, Turkish uh, citizens and 2,193 people got wounded. The perpetrators of this attempted coup is one of the most vicious, one of the most evil terrorist organizations of the world called FETO. They are not only active in our country, but they are also active through their networks around 170 countries in the world. Since July the 15th, without compromising on the rule of law and justice, we have been extensively combating this terrorist organization. And we are informing of our friends about the way FETO builds up its network and how these militants infiltrate into the state institutions, how they get their resources and what kind of disguises they use. And I know that India will take the necessary measures in order to expel FETO from her territory once and for all. That's why in the aftermath of July the 15th, the Indian administration called me and stated their full support and solidarity and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank them once again and primarily the Prime Minister. We've also exchanged our opinions on international developments. The populism is on the rise all around the world and divisions on the basis of sex and religion is are, are being encouraged and the uh, distinction between the East and the West is becoming much more highlighted especially in Europe, xenophobia and cultural racism is taking over as if it were a venomous ivy or a poison ivy. All throughout history, we have been homes to various civilizations. The differences should not be feared as threats, but they should be embraced as wealth and riches. I think as India and Turkey, we need full cooperation and solidarity in global and regional matters. In order for global peace to be established, in order for prosperity and stability to prevail, India and Turkey should get closer to one another. And I hope and pray that this mentality will pave the way for our future endeavors. I would like to state that my visit will yield the most auspicious results for my country and for also India. And I would like to thank His Excellency the Prime Minister for being such gracious hosts, not only personally, but also on behalf of my delegation. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. This brings uh, to close this particular event. Thank you all.